scratch start, three boy handicap. Uh, anybody's guess who's going to get the podium today, folks. Great race, though, by the, at this point in time. They're all there, all the scratch markers and the uh, and the other people trying to get their boats tuned up for this Giltman, which is only a couple of weeks away. Come back to you with the uh, the southern side meets the uh, north side up on this turn mark. So here's the uh, approach to these top turn marks. There's three cans, don't forget here. There's uh, the scratch markers, which Smeg is a scratch boat and so it's got to love it. Now, we were saying how you decided to go to the right or the left of Shark Island. Smeg went hard right and he, don't forget, he broke the start. So, Sebi Jarb and the other scratch boat here today, I reckon Smeg's uh, pulled into him and uh, by going to the right, Mark Hurley. So this is going to be an interesting day. Left yeah. or right, which side of the island? Oh, very go? hard, isn't it? But in the meantime, Andy Budgeon, who sailed really nicely with with his new setup, his new rig, he's going around the blue boy just on his bow. So he is going to be first round. No, pure blonde is actually just going round. Well, the red there you bar. go. Come round to the left, and that's our leader, yeah, pure blonde. Pure blonde is technically our leader, even though on our sheet it says he should have gone round blue. Ah, uh, well, that can happen. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> I don't know whether our sheet's wrong or he's wrong, but somebody's wrong. But let's assume. That, I hope he's right for his sake. Uh, uh, Fisher and Pagel's gone round there, uh, Simon, just to the right. The Fisher and Pagel right, so, boat, which is one of my picks for today. And you'll see Andy budging into camera now, who's gone round the next boy up the blue mark, and you'll get a view. You can see how the handicap system works. It's a great system. Seven in the meantime has only just gone round and as has Smeg, the furthest mark. That's cost them 100 metres or plus. That's yeah. the handicap system working nicely. Yeah, and my other boat uh, is coming into this mark now. Or has he already gone round? No, furlow collect. Give yourself an uppercut. You're right up there and now you've uh, <laughs> fallen out of it. I think that last tack cost him plenty. So uh, anyway, through comes uh, Coco. Oh, and we're just going to... Oh, 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 Coco has hooked up man, with the uh, man, uh, online. With... That was a full contact between oh. the two. Oh, yeah. That is a horrible, horrible situation. Co that's definite uh, gear damage on appliances online. And uh, Cocker's obviously gone for a swim. That could be the end of his race. That's, he's gone. He's and gone, uh, indeed. This is like some of the chaos with the multiple boy rounding, of course. Sometimes you're not sure converge, who's going yeah. around which boy. So you're never sure if someone's about to bear away around a mark. That's what that happened there, I think. the downside of this type of racing, for sure. And there's uh, an, an example of it. Cocker's in the tight. His day's done. And so is uh, appliances online. Broken bow pole as a result of that collision. Meanwhile, the race goes on and these boats with spinnakers are off to Athelbite, Athel Bay, so we'll just tag along all nice and uh, close here on this downward uh, section of this course and then it is down with the spinnakers and a beat back up into uh, Double Bay turn mark. So just abreast of uh, Shark Island and you see this type of racing how it all bunches up, a bit different as I was saying, but last week's race you just had two tear away uh, combatants being smeg and gotta love it in that scratch race but today totally different, they're all jammed together and this is a, like the running of the bulls Mark, it, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a ding dong race, I can't see anybody winning this by a long way, I think this will go down to the wire this one or at least it looks like it will. Lots of obstacles out here, light and fluky, but uh, a real tester. So here's our leader, Jimmy Francis and the Pure Blonde Boys. These guys are leading this race at the moment. There's been a bit of drama coming down here. Uh, there's a few guys that need to give themselves an uppercut and read the course map for this course. One of them being uh, Andy Budgeon in the project. They decided it could have been an easterly for some reason, so they've sailed a different mark off uh, Double Bay and it's cost them dearly, so I don't think we'll see them back in this race. They this persuaded a few others to follow them too, <laughs> didn't they? As often happens. So, oh, God. The boats that jived away early, including Seven, um, and I think Smeg, um, they've had a shocker too. So it's really the boats like Pure Blonde and actually Red Claws had a cracking run down here, who just stayed on this long port. Uh, at the moment, are eking out a pretty sizable advantage. Yeah. And of course, Pure Blonde goes round uh, some advantageous boys having a big handicap. I reckon they got the first mark right. I mean, we mentioned we thought they might have got it wrong. We've double checked, done our paperwork, and they are right. We were wrong, so good on the Pure Blonde boys. They're this in is the one race. of your picks, isn't it, mate? It is one of my picks, yeah, so I'm pretty happy about that. I think they, uh, they've, they've been okay in the light air. Then they got uh, Cam McDonald in the middle of the boat, who's a very talented addition to their crew. And then you add in a favourable handicap, and uh, to me, it's a no-brainer.